What's up guys, Michael Anthony here, and welcome to episode 4 of The Beat on the Street. Today I have some new music for you, as well as some videos and an interview with Woves. In the last episode I had a great chat with Ice Keen, who has just released a new track called Webs. Let's check it out. <laughs> Breathe. 
Again, guys, that was Webs by Ice Keen, who just released her new track on Spotify. So let me ask you a question. Growing up, who was some of your favorite duet singers? Was it Sonny and Cher? Maybe it was Bill Medley and Jennifer Warnes? Right now, let's check out Lemon and Orion of Thought Beings in their new single, The World. Again, that was The World by Thought Beings, which is a really awesome music video with their track. Next up, we have The Future Kids, who just released their second album through Outland Recordings called 80s Dreams. This is one track from their album called Beneath the Stars.
Okay, guys, that was another awesome video with a lot of nostalgic 80s vibes in it, which is definitely something that brings back a lot of memories for me. Next up, we have my interview with Emily and Josh of Woves, followed by their music video. Let's check it out. Okay, guys, I want to welcome Emily and Josh of Woves. Guys, thank you for taking the time to be on the show today. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Thank you. So you guys, um, back in, I believe, October, I remember hearing your first single was uh, 1AM from the album uh, Chaos Mesa. Did I pronounce that right? I hope I did. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so what was it like um, coming up with new music for Woves? And how did you guys uh, form the band? We formed because we met sort of through like Craigslist when we were both in LA and I was looking for collaborators to work with because all my musical people were back in New York and, um, and Josh and I met, we realized we lived five minutes apart from one another and we worked on a bunch of other projects together. Um, and then I'll let you run with this second half, Josh, <laughs> the writing. It's like, it sort of came from you. Yeah. Um, well, I, I write a lot for um, TV and uh, film and one of the projects I was working on was like a synth wave kind of project. So um, came up with a, a bunch of instrumentals with uh, my writing partner at the time, Colby Wade, and uh, um, used some of them for that project. And then a couple others, I was like, oh, we should release these. These are, these are really cool. Um, so send them over to Emily because she can always um, come up with, with vocal parts and lyrics pretty quickly. And uh, she connected with the with the tracks right away and was able to come in pretty soon after that and lay down some vocals and she sent it to a friend of hers from um, uh, from school and who who ran a record label and was looking to um, start like a new division of that label uh, for for synthwave um, or like I guess synthy stuff uh, he, was, he was yeah he was electronic he was a big uh, big fan of Depeche Mode. Oh, okay. And wanted to kind of roll with that and do his own thing. Uh, so he asked us to, you know, can you guys get me an album of this? So uh, I think by then we had like two or three songs. I was like, sure. So over the next couple months, just wrote, uh, pushed out these tracks. And um, yeah, it came kind of naturally. Um, once I'm, I'm on like a, a project, I kind of have to, you know, I, I just go until, until it's, it's done. Um, like I don't think about anything else really. Um, until I get that finished and that's pretty much where we're at I've got the tracks okay. out to Emily she came in and, and uh, laid down vocals and I think a couple of weeks later yeah we had we had an album so that's that's how that came, came oh, that's to really be cool. that's definitely that, one of my I was gonna say then that label kind of took a pandemic hit and we were starting to release some of the music on our own, well, through Josh's indie label, which is what we'd kind of put out stuff we'd done together before. And then Cole approached us before 1 a.m., obviously, because we ended up signing with Retro Reverb Records mm -hmm. and putting 1 a.m. out as the first single with the label. And, but we had done earlier releases of Release and So Used to Heartbreak and the Christmas single. Um, and then we remixed them for the album that Retro Reverb Records put out. Oh, wow. That's really cool. Hey, Journey. Yeah, definitely. I think you both of you guys have backgrounds in music as well, too. I remember from reading the, um, the Let's Get to Know, the, inter the written interview we did on the website, which was really cool to see. And then, Emily, you do... Uh, You've also had vocals in other genres of music as well, too. Yeah, like we started releasing singles for Woves at the beginning of 2021. But 2020 was sort of the culmination of a few years of me really in L.A.'s Americana rock scene. And I put out a record in 2020 that was produced by Ted Russell Camp, had some radio and Spotify stuff and everything. But everybody kind of knew me from that world. <laughs> and then it was like, oh, okay. ah, about face. I mean, people in New York knew me to do electronic stuff. And there's some collaborators I have in the UK that really only know me for that unless they've seen me play live with an acoustic guitar. But yeah, there's, uh, those are sort of like my two spaces or like 
more organic Americana rock mm -hmm. or electronica. And when I say electronica, it could be anything. Like I, I've done stuff in house, I've done stuff in trip hop. Uh, we have this like synth wave thing. Um, yeah, it's, I don't know. It, it, to me, it's like, it's the same writing process with different dressing. Okay. If that makes any sense. You know, yeah. the songs, the way I write a song is the same, whether it's for a guitar as the lead or a synth as the lead. It's just how it's produced. And maybe thematically, lyrically, it might get a little more esoteric or, you know, because the big thing with like, the rock stuff is like, keep it simple, <laughs> you know, keep it really simple and like, don't get too flowy poetry about it. But this kind of lets me go off and live in a dream for a while, which is kind of fun too. Yeah, definitely. That is, that is cool. I've been a fan of electronic music for probably since the, I want to say mid to late nineties, uh, when it really, in my opinion, uh, when it really blew up around, you know, like the city clubs, Jersey clubs, things like that. Mm -hmm. And then it's it's really cool to see it evolve like so many genres now it's like crazy i can't even keep up with all of them well, um, there was such a movement towards um like soundtracks and tv and film and even commercials using so much more of that kind of music because it really is the next iteration of like the classical composer you know when mm -hmm. you're dealing with textures and soundtracks and i'm sure josh can speak to this because that's what he does but I see them very, you know, and you think of things made in the 60s and the 70s, there was so much orchestration that was part of the music involved in these film scores or, or TV scores and TV theme songs that now so much of that I feel like is in electronic music or yeah. different forms of it. So, Yeah, Josh, I remember reading you, um, you were working with someone from The Voice at the time we did the interview, the written interview. Yeah, um, I was, uh, I worked on um, the civil rights documentary. I worked on the music for that. Um, it's called On the Battlefield. Uh, and uh, that was November and December. And um, I wrote a lot of uh, like background music and then um, just different little songs and compositions and stuff. And the big song at the end, uh, they basically wanted a replacement for Rise Up by Andrew Day um that that famous song uh and they got uh this girl uh aria blue from the voice uh i think she was working she was doing um like a title uh, you know like jay-z's title uh they do these uh, studio uh, recordings and stuff and at the time she was working with him so we were trying to get her down from that in a specific time frame um and i'm in la and they're out uh, the battlefield people they're out in Delaware and, and New York area so basically we're trying to like just sync everybody up at the same time and um, I the track ended up being over because they needed it to fit over like a certain amount of time at the end of the uh, the end of the movie it was like six minutes six and a half minutes something like that so in like a day and a half I wrote this six and a half minute uh, pop ballad um, <laughs> that uh you know, it's interesting because it's for a civil rights documentary. So it's my voice at first, um, which she had to, you know, pretty much just like sing those parts. It was just like, it's like a white guy singing, uh, you know, this R this like uh, R&B pop ballad kind of thing. And it just, it was really funny. They're like, we really like your voice on it. And I was like, please don't, don't use my voice for this. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's like, you know, like a rock voice almost. And I'm just like, please. But thankfully, uh, they were able to sync everything up, and um, and Arya came in and uh, took a couple sessions, I think, to get everything down. And uh, yeah, they're gonna. They, um, I think the they're like pitching the movie right now to the people at like Sundance and however you really go about all that stuff. Uh, and then um, specifically, they're gonna submit that song to the Oscars next year. So. Um, awesome. I got my my fingers crossed on that. That'd be pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So try to try to do as, as many different kinds of genres and stuff just to keep uh, just to keep it interesting. You know, if I it, it helps clear the air. Like we uh, Cole from Retro Reverb wants um, wants an EP uh, this year. I think in September or something. So that's pretty much written, but. Um, you know, it's good to like do something like that and then do something like, 
you know, like pop ballads and, and then, and then do uh, string compositions and stuff like that. When I met you, you were doing a lot of hip hop too. I was doing a lot of hip hop there. Yeah. There's a lot of hip hop artists out here. So, you know, when I, when I moved out here, I started, um, I'd always been a mainly just songwriter and I kind of shifted to the production side of things when I moved out to LA uh, nine years ago. So just kind of building on that, um and yeah had a ton of ton of rappers come in and and uh, hip-hop artists and stuff started writing some hip-hop stuff um which was really fun and i still do uh, occasionally but um yeah kind of slowing that down and taking some time for myself i got a baby on the way next month um oh, wow. Congratulations. so uh yeah thank you <clears throat> so try to try to finish up these uh next set of wove tracks that we have uh coming out at the end of the year and uh see where everything takes us that's awesome yeah one of the things too i noticed was the artwork on uh your album cover and just in general some of like the band pictures as well too i think you guys were like behind like a, a flowers and you had like flower heads or something i forgot exactly what i was gonna wear that mask today i was gonna show up to the interview with that mask but i couldn't find it i was like where is this thing it'd be hilarious oh, it was a mask and I, I wasn't sure what it was yeah we made these masks my wife like sewed all these uh, flowers onto the masks they're not real flowers i think that would be <laughs> i mean a gross mask after a while but <laughs> yeah it's definitely cool artwork for the for the uh album cover as well too i love that the band you know the album in general like i listened to it from start to finish i thought it was great really Thank cool you. thanks great stuff yeah um so you guys mentioned I, I know we were talking before um you guys grew up in the pennsylvania area from the east it's close to me and then you guys moved out west which i'm jealous of you know i'd love to be in cali but <laughs> What was it like um, growing up around Pennsylvania, like around that area? I think we had very different experiences because Josh comes from probably a bit more close to finger on the pulse urbanity. And if anyone spent any time in Southwestern PA, you know that culturally, so it works about 20 years behind the rest of the country. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's just very remote out there. You found the freaks because there weren't a lot of us. And we all like ended up leaving. And many of us are still in touch, you know, like the art kids and the theater kids. And um, sometimes there were musicians. Uh, some of the musicians were actors or painters, you know, and um, I don't know, it, it inspired me to leave. I mean, I always felt like I was going to leave from a very early age, just because I didn't really connect. Yeah. And um, yeah, I don't know. You yeah, know, you same. Go back and I, I talked to one of my buddies last week. He, he lives up in Portland now, and he was one of my oldest buddies from high school. And, and I'm always like, you know, you go back there and you see the nature and you see all these things that were like sentimental and almost like romantic places in your mind. And you're like, ah, oh, what about that? Like I could move back to that, but then, you get there and then there's like, you come up like head to head with like the people who like were like, you know, like beating the crap out of you or like bullying you or whatever. And you're just like, it doesn't change. It's like, you can't take that one thing and forget everything else. And so just go like, okay, well, a week is probably enough. <laughs> and go back home and <laughs> to where I have like my tribe and everything. So I don't know. That was my experience. Yeah, pretty much the same for me. I, I grew up uh, closer to Philly, um, uh, about like 35 minutes outside of Philly, uh, in Allentown area. And uh, so there are more like uh, clubs and stuff. I mean, it, uh, basically, I left right after high school. <clears throat> um, I couldn't wait to leave. Uh, I moved to, actually moved to Penn State um, with a girl <laughs> for about a year. Uh, and then um realized I was like I gotta go to school for music I gotta I gotta I get out of here and, and do something so that's when I went to uh to Minneapolis and went to school for songwriting production and uh yeah basically was there for five years and um moved to San Diego met actually who I was talking about earlier my writing partner Colby Wade out in San Diego um and we formed a band and were there for about a year. And then we, we all moved. They actually, the whole band came to me one day and we're like, Hey, 
San Diego sucks. Like the music scene, there's nothing here. Like we all, we, let's go to San Francisco. And I was like, I was like, no, if you guys want to move, we're moving to New York. And they're like, oh, okay. So I got them all, the whole band to move across the country to New York. Uh, and that band broke up six months later after we got to New York. <laughs> oh, wow. Like, like, like it does. No, it's good. I mean, me and Colby stayed together. Um, you know, did our thing in different bands. Uh, and um, he, I moved out here nine years ago. So we we're, we we're basically in New York for about 10 years. I moved out here nine years ago. And he actually just right when the pandemic hit, there was, you know, I think actually like a year into it, he's, you know, his restaurant that he worked at closed down. Uh, and he, his girlfriend's brother uh, owns a cannabis farm up north here in uh in norcal so he they just ended up moving up there and they work from there and he's he's still there now oh wow yeah that's pretty cool so where um where can everyone find you on uh social media you guys are on twitter i see instagram yeah uh let's see well we we have sort of a a paltry website which may actually disappear but that's wovesmusic.com we're on facebook.com slash wolves music, Twitter at wolves music, Instagram at wolves music. We have a very bandcamp, bandcamp wolves.bandcamp.com. That's the place um, where if you want to buy any music or anything, you should go to. Yeah. And then if you want to get wolves merch, because I haven't figured out how to get it onto the bandcamp yet, but you can go to singenginerecords.com, which is josh's label and there's a store and it has like cool lids like the one he's wearing and t-shirts and tanks and sweatshirts and you know i don't know do you have a beer cozy <laughs> no i'm working That's on under country market. i'm working on underwear and uh yeah beer cozies for sure thongs <laughs> i can't fit that. anything on a thong you can't fit any, anything on a thong <laughs> Is there a supply and demand for that? Or <laughs> probably. I hope so. Someone's gonna Maybe buy it. onesies. You gotta Someone like branch into that market. Oh yeah. my god. <laughs> <laughs> so Disposable wolves diapers. There you go. I gotta, I definitely have to check that out. I'll definitely get something. Definitely cool. support yeah. you guys. That's awesome. Thank you. So um, before we wrap up the interview, guys, do you have any announcements, anything coming out shortly you'd like to let everyone know about? New video, April 23rd for Flesh and Bone Midnight Dancing. Awesome. Uh, do you have anything else? We will have a new EP later. We have to turn it in later this year. It probably won't come out till next year, I would imagine, with the holiday crunch. Um, the same, yeah, around the same time Chaos Mesa came out, probably. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if there's anything else. Can you think of anything, Josh? Just the video and the upcoming EP. Um, there's still the last video, which is which is pretty awesome that people should check yeah, out. Yeah, the kill. That one was pretty rad, very unique and 3D animation and feast for the eyes. Yeah, definitely. I had checked that out. I like that a lot. Really cool. I think we're gonna be uh I'll have that on the other show as well, too, on the fourth sector show. Yay. We'll be showing that. Should be out Thanks. soon this week, actually. So we'll see. Yeah, it's a, it's awesome. a great video. I, I love having visuals attached to to the music. I, I would do a video for every song if I could. Yeah, yeah, I love audio visual stuff. I always, especially with electronic music, it seems to mesh well together. For, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys. So again, thank you. I appreciate it for taking the time to be on the show. Um, Thanks, Michael. Thank you. And I'm, after this, I'm going to play one of your songs as well, too, so everyone can hear some of your music. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Have a good one. Running high, arms out wide, escape and ride the light. Fast and dry, feel so alive. City in the review, pull me closer if you're there today. I don't want anyone but you.
tide rolling On the Friday If you let it get to you Kind of exciting The night is ours Ours and ours alone Again, a big thank you to Emily and Josh for coming on the show and having a great interview. Next up is Galactic Tapes with The Void Drifter.
Okay, guys, that was The Void Drifter by Galactic Tapes. And I want to say thank you for submitting that to me. I'm definitely enjoying the album. Next up, we have The Blue Book Project with The Fifth Dimension. It was definitely a fun music video. Thank you, Blue Book Project, for submitting that to me. One last video, guys. We have Cool Mo We with Searching for Love. I'll be searching for love.
Okay, guys, it's about that time to wrap up episode four of The Beat on the Street. If you would like to submit any music videos or tracks, send them to me at beatstreetsub at gmail.com. You could also find me at popartav.com with my monthly new release page, Let's Get to Know interviews, and some more tracks and music videos and announcements that go on throughout the week. Also, check out my YouTube channel, for The Fourth Sector, which is my new collaboration with Ashley Anita of Forged in Neon. A lot more videos to come. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe as I really do appreciate it. Any and all feedback. Thank you guys, and I'll see you next time.